Namaste and welcome to class and thank you so much for sitting with me, with you and the right attention. And today's class is about three attributes of your mind. We will try to relate in this occasion to the mind as an app, a software of yourself. And it has certain um, attributes or certain functions that it does all the time. And if we are not aware that is that is doing it, then it grows and it grows and it grows and it jammed your whole entire uh, intellect. And if you 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 think that the mind is bigger, that you are inside the mind, which is the opposite. The mind is more of a, of a, of a layer, but is 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 not is not. You're not inside of it. Once you think you're inside of it, you think, oh, I don't have any solutions. So it is important to know these um, capabilities of the uh, mind and treat it like an app. I also will give you some solutions. So um, I want to lay first out three specific ones, and then we talk about different things that we can do to get out or purified or crystallize your mind up. So the first one is the mind is designed to replicate things. And um, by replicate means is to put in place over and over impressions that you have received from the senses. So if somebody, especially the negative, especially the negative. If somebody have an opinion of you or an appreciation or a, um, a comment or you fantasize that, oh, maybe this person don't like me, that start to become like a loop. Hmm? Have you experienced that? where you are just thinking the same thing over and over, oh, I should have not done that, and you go into a loop of guilt and, and, and can attack you for two days, and oh, it's so exhausting just to be in that loop. That's part of the replication of, it loves to move you in, or move itself into loops. And those loops then, there still is going to be there, but it goes more in dormancy um, because you can sustain more than two and a half days the amount of looping, right? Because it's, a, it's an electrical um, circuit that is happening in there and the nervous system really cannot um, sustain one kind of loop. Then it changes to another loop, a more pleasant one. But the fact is that your mind app loves to replicate. The second thing that your mind app does is it records. It records absolutely everything that is happening in the world of experiences. It records through the senses. Anything you see, anything you hear, anything you think, anything you touch, anything that you taste is being recorded. And where is being recorded? Is recorded in the five elements. You, are, you know you are made of the five elements. And in that combination and permutation is what we call in Ayurveda the doshas. But all, all the elements have incredible amount of memories and it's through the app of the mind that it get recorded in there. That's why when we are purifying, for example, um, we have these images or instances that have no relation to us and it's just deep-seated memories that have been in the cells for a long, long time. 
So recording is, is happening not only through the gross senses, but also your subtle senses. Your subtle senses can um, know the feeling of somebody, can know the energy of the environment, it, it picks up the energy of the location you live in, the changes on human collective, all that is the mind records it. It gathers all the information. Sometimes in disorder because it's not necessarily linking anything, it's just recording. And the third attribute of your mind app is it loves to create. It just, if you don't put your mind to work, then it becomes naggy. It becomes just like a child. What I should do? Okay, maybe I should do something uh, easy. Or, you know, it, 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 the mind is designed to uh, connect with your passion and give a logic and a strategy to manifest your passion constantly and fluently. So when it doesn't work, when it doesn't receive the information of your highest passion, it starts to fantasize, it, it, it starts to uh, uh, be, just be lazy, basically. It creates something of a lower um, caliber. So you start thinking that, oh, I cannot do that. It's too much work. It's a limitation and I cannot do it. So you agree with what the mind creates. And of course you feed it your creation with either your courage, your stamina, and your desire to break and limiting a limiting uh, beliefs and the curiosity to know what's next, what is life, what is what I can do or feel or understand or love. So if you don't put it to work, it just simply is going to be lazy. And from laziness, it becomes dull and from dullness, it, it hit the emotions and you just feel depressed because you don't feel that you're able to do anything. Now the, if, we, if we can think that the, the mind or this software is mostly electrical, is, is very fast, uh, is, it connects things very fast and it opens a growth of response in your nervous system that make you think that that's the way you are. Let's say if you uh, train yourself to respond to a compliment with uh, shame or with shyness, that happens once or happened twice and then is the, in the nervous system it creates a growth of response, a pattern that you think that, oh, this is me, this is how I respond. But that electrical um, function of the mind is moved by prana, is moved by the breath. That's why I always say mind and breath are like this. They're so connected. If there is prana in the nervous system, the growth of response is different. So you're not replicating uh, loops you are more into um, records that are selective rather than say, well, I am going to do to this party and you are going to record things that perhaps is not in agreement with your frequency. And also you have the energy to create, to see, to have more, more, um, connectability with, uh, with, between the different information, giving you more resources. So it is electrical, 
and it also is vibration that is in tunement with the source because the mind is within the ocean of the source who have availability of countless vibrations, countless waves of, uh, fr of different frequencies. So the best ally to the mind is mantras, is vibration. And here is something that I need to explain to you. Mantra is a vibration and is in dormancy until the prana of mm, a high frequency, a high person frequency awakens. So if I say to somebody, the mantra, let's say, Ram. If it doesn't have the vibration, the aliveness of that individual, the light, the prana of that individual, that mantra is still in dormancy. So that's why it's not, it's not convenient to read in a book, it's, oh, I love this mantra. I, I am going to repeat it. No, all the scriptures are in dormancy until they are awake by the prana of the one that has the energy to awake that vibration. This is the source of mantra initiation, for example. And not, not, in, not even mantras. The other day I was seeing the teacher of the Dalai Lama. And to teach Dalai Lama, he goes, Dalai Lama select a part of a scripture, take it to him, the teacher reads it, one sentence, the student repeats it, and then when the paragraph is done, the, is given to the student and the student meditate on it or give certain sadhana. So it is in that moment that that teachings get awake, they get alive. It gets easy to merge with the electricity of the mind. It's like you need to plug it in to uh, the, high, the, the right voltage for the mantra to awake. And this is very important. So once you, you have that opportunity, the mind wants to replicate it and not only wants to replicate it, but it wants to become. And it's in the, in the Shiva Sutras that it say the mind, uh, let the mind become the mantra because it is a mantra. It replicates, it records, and it creates. So with this understanding, it may be much easier for you to observe the mind when it start looping and say, what is it that it's asking me? It's not necessarily a mantra, but it's asking me to select the impressions that I would like to reaffirm to myself, right? It's, it's different to see a collective YouTube uh, video than a fresh flower. Because when you see the fresh flower, you are not only receiving the impression for the mind, but you are also, you are a mantra, you are also transmitting yourself 
consciousness to the flower. And that is symbiosis. That is how we increase the frequency in the planet by transferring our vibration, by sharing it, by speaking it, and seal it by any action. If you are seeing the collective YouTube videos that some they have nonsense, I'm not saying that not all are with no value, you, it happens the opposite. You are, um, your energy is being steel. You're being sucked in. Have you had that experience? You see one video and then you look at the other one and then you start browsing all this and that and you end up watching nothing except just browsing, right? So at the end you feel so tired. There is no energy exchange. Even if you get content, you, you, you just get more dull. So observe that transferring of energy of the mind, right? Because either it's transferring to you by replication, is recording either the fresh flower, nature, the people that agree with your frequency, and from that it creates your reality. So you have total power over your mind up. You just need to really know how it works. And of course, this quintessence of, for the mind is meditation, where it's active uh, during the day, you are 100% engaged in your skills and your expression and then you learn how to turn it off, just to simply rest. That way the mind don't get overheated. Mm? So hopefully this is of any help. Thank you so much for listening and sitting with me and cultivating yourself. It's, uh, it's part of your donation to humanity. Namaste. Thank you.